The Vision FX plugin uses a photo or image to create AI-enabled generative art. Rather than a quick and immediate effect, such as a PaintShop Pro script or a Photoshop action, think of Vision FX as a powerful tool in your artistic toolkit. It takes a bit of practice, but the plugin can help bring your ideas and imagination to life. In this video, I'll present 10 tips to help you get the most out of Vision FX. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find links on the page below for additional information and resources, FAQs, and some sample prompts to get you started. Using several strong keywords in your prompt helps Vision FX produce more intricate and detailed results. In this example, using only the two keywords spaceship and science fiction, and keeping the other settings at their defaults, provides a decent starting point. This is a good way to generate some rough ideas. After I get a better sense of what I want to see, I can bump up the text guidance scale and expand on my prompt terms. It's important to be specific and detailed. The more details you include, the more likely you are to get the results you envisioned. My prompt now includes aliens, dystopian, battles, lasers, explosions, scary, dramatic, intricate, and detailed. When you want different results, you don't have to generate a whole new set of five AI images. To try out a new idea while saving some time, I can select the fourth image, adjust the prompts or settings, and click Run to regenerate only images 4 and 5. Clicking on each result shows the settings used to generate that image. If I want to apply these new settings to all five results, I need to select either new image, copy its prompts, and note the other settings. Then I would open the first result, apply the new prompts and settings, and run again. The Steps setting controls how the image is processed, or diffused, which affects the quality of the result. These images were generated with the default Van Gogh prompts and settings. Using the minimum step value of 20 produces relatively quick results, but not of the highest quality. In these initial low-step images, note the loose detail and artifacts. I'll go back to the third image to regenerate the last three, bump up steps to the maximum of 75, and run again. The three new images take a bit longer to generate than before, but all have smoother lines, higher detail, and no artifacts when compared with the first two previous results. If you like your results, you'll only get the same results again if all settings are exactly the same. This means you'll need to use the exact same prompts in the same order, strength and text guidance values, and starting seed. If you want to recreate your results for this image or perhaps similar images, use the Windows Snipping Tool or another screen capture tool to take a snapshot of the Vision FX window. Save the captured image for future reference when running the plugin again. Smaller images get processed faster by Vision FX. 512 pixels is the optimal starter size and is also the default size produced by Vision FX. But if you want your final image to be larger, try upsampling your AI results in your host software. I've generated these images at full step value, and I'll choose this one to bring back into PaintShop Pro. To upsample, I'll choose Image Resize and Increase by a percentage of 400. Farther down, I'll click Advanced and AI Powered Settings. There are several methods, and I'll choose AI Powered and Illustration. After clicking OK, the image is now four times larger with resolution similar to the original. If I were using the Vision FX plugin in Corel Draw, upsampling is done by choosing Bitmaps Resample, and in PhotoPaint it's Image Resample. To generate an interesting landscape image, you don't have to start with a landscape photo. In PaintShop Pro, I have a 512 pixel image, on which I'll add a gradient fill, choose the Dusty Skies preset, and click to apply. Using this as the starter image for Vision FX, I'll see what results I get with the prompt Mountains, 
Autumn Leaves, Lake. Strength and text guidance need to be at max value, since there's nothing else in the image to go on, and I'll make the step value low for quicker generation. In all options, the gradient is nicely incorporated in the background, but these prompts didn't yield what I was hoping for. The order of prompt terms can make a difference, and I want some or all results to include a lake. So I'll try again after rearranging the terms to lake, autumn leaves, mountains. Now I have a few lakes, but the results are still pretty basic. When relying on text guidance alone, it's very important to have a healthy number of prompt words and phrases. As we've seen, just a couple of prompts means that you have less control, which can be great for starter ideas. When you're ready to build on your prompts, more is better, so long as they make sense together. Think of the image you are trying to evoke and the ways you would describe it. Remember, this AI model is built from descriptions of existing images and will use those descriptions to attempt to reproduce what you're requesting. Now I've added a few more terms about colorful boats in the lake, impressionist style, and relaxing and peaceful atmosphere, and bumped up the steps for higher quality. Each landscape is now much more detailed and tailored to my prompts. Even so, not every option shows all of the elements I want, which means that some trial and error is usually needed for adding, changing, and reordering prompts. As with an AI-generated landscape, you can also use Vision FX to generate a new character. In this example, I'm starting with a completely blank image and entering prompts to generate a ballet dancing cat. As before, I'm using maximum strength, text guidance, and steps. This is a great way to generate from scratch ideas for characters, book covers, posters, etc. You can combine the tools of your host software with the power of VisionFX to craft exactly the image you want. In this example, I've used VisionFX to generate a few ancient Chinese parchment versions of this cardinal. I'll save this one to bring back into PaintShop Pro which replaces the original photo in the layer I duplicated for this purpose. While still in PaintShop Pro, I'll duplicate the AI layer, then open the Instant Effects palette and apply the Aged Texture effect. With this layer active, that has both AI and PaintShop Pro effects, I'll go back to Vision FX and apply some new prompts to add a watercolor on parchment effect. One area that AI in general doesn't always get right is facial features, but you can use tools in your host software to fix problem areas. In this example, I've produced Renoir style results from this photo, and in each one, the face is a bit off. I'll choose this one to work with and save it to its duplicated layer in PaintShop Pro. Since I have the original photo on the layer below, there are a few ways I can adjust the face. An easy way is with the eraser tool set to a low brush size, low hardness, and reduced opacity. Sweeping over problem areas allows the layer below to show through, and turning off the layer enables me to compare features. Adjusting layer blend modes can also produce nice effects, such as screen blend in this example. Another PaintShop Pro tool that can help with facial features is the clone brush. Turning off the AI layer and making the original layer active, I'll right-click to clone the right eye. Then, bringing back the AI layer and making it active, I'll click to replace that eye. Finally, with the right software, you can easily convert a VisionFX generated image into a vector file. In this example, I used VisionFX to generate an elephant logo from a blank image, using terms including logo, corporate, elephant, flat image, clean lines, symmetrical, and black and white. After saving that image as a JPEG, I've imported it into Corel Draw. Right-clicking on a bitmap opens a context menu that includes several tracing options, and I'll choose Outline Trace, Detailed Logo. This opens the Power Trace window, in which I'll set a high level of detail and smoothing, but leave corners sharp. There are several options on the other tabs as well, but I'll click OK to start the tracing. After the operation is finished, I can see the new group of curves in the object's docker, in addition to the original JPEG. I'll delete the image, and I now have a vector design I can use for t-shirts, 
posters, marketing materials, you name it. This brings us to the end of our 10 tips for better AI art. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find links on the page below for additional information and resources, FAQs, and some sample prompts to get you started.